Hello everyone, it's a Bitcoin News Review. My name is Tracy Lewin. And Peter Murray. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Peter. We seem to have a few technical problems today, so I'm thinking that it might be because I'm actually in Dubai and it is so hot. Maybe the cables are cooking. Talking about the cables cooking, um, it was the hottest day in, in, in Europe yesterday, or, or one of the hottest days, and um, in the UK, I saw a... Um, Two, two um, news reports. One was a sinkhole that um, emerged um, on, on one of the train lines and a lot of the trains to London was, I couldn't run. And the other one was uh, in, in Yorkshire. Uh, one of the train lines buckled because of the heat. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> so yeah. Incredible. So maybe we do have some global warming after all. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so it was a pretty hot week in, in uh, Bitcoin. Uh, you know, every single week is a hot week, actually. <laughs> well, it was a hot, <coughs> sorry, it was a hot week in, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry, Tracy. <coughs> it was a hot week in news in any event. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we've had all these um, attacks and stuff. Oh, it's, it's, it's absolutely horrible. Yeah, we've, uh, in fact, Steemit, uh, which is a blogging site, uh, they got attacked. They had just paid out $1.3 uh, million to, to bloggers. And a couple of days later, $85,000 was, was nicked. But what they've said is they're going to be um, making sure that everybody gets paid back. So, um, or rather gets their money. So let's see, you know, um, I've, I've been doing a bit of blogging on Steemit and it's a lot of fun. So if we can, I was also referring to the tax. Hello? Sorry, Peter, I didn't hear. I didn't hear what you said there. No, I said I actually was also referring to the knife attacks in France and in Germany. Oh, okay. I don't know if you if you saw that. Yes, I did. Yeah, that's horrible. And then yes. obviously we had all this news in Turkey. Correct. Um, yeah, so. And and you know what? In terms of, of Turkey, they're saying that, uh, you know, the Turkish re residents flocked to, to Bitcoin, you know, during the coup. But, uh, you know, apparently the, the, the people were just going crazy to try and get to ATMs to draw their money. And um, and now there's a, there's a, there's a three-month um, state of emergency in the country. So... You know, I'm, I'm wondering if these people are going to be able to put their money into Bitcoin. Well, it's going to be see, interesting to see what happens in Turkey because it's, uh, at the moment, Turkey is a gateway to Europe. Yes, it is. And in fact, just a couple <clears> of <throat> months ago, they were talking about allowing uh, Turkish citizens to, to be able to, you know, to get into, into Europe without visas. And, uh, but they had to meet certain, uh, obviously, criteria. Clearly, uh, you know, I think that one will be put aside for now. Yeah, absolutely. I can't see that happening. Okay, so talking about uh, law enforcement, uh, Europol who hosts a digital currency conference for law enforcement. So this was a two-day conference just, you know, of, of uh, law enforcement uh, people talking about how they, you know, what can they do with digital currency and that type of thing. So... You know, it's it's there's always a there's always a concern, and there seems to be a concern around uh, digital currency and you know people breaking the law. But in actual fact, you can break the law with any kind of currency. So they're obviously just trying to see how they can maybe catch people. Well, I think maybe you know, uh, obviously law enforcement are trying to use the blockchain and stuff like that as well. So yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a very good thing. And now, um, Bain a blockchain report, there was a report that's just come out saying that uh, the wait and see approach is very, very wrong for banks. I mean, banks are not moving fast enough to protect blockchain innovation, stealing up to, and listen to this, 150,000 uh, billion of revenue. Uh, so this is a bit of a shocker, huge amount of money that could go um, away from the banks. Yeah, there was another report, I think, that you said last week, um, yeah. that the guy said in South Africa that it was, what, 40%. 40 40%. 40% yes. of bank profits can go to the blockchain. Gosh, so, quite correct. Yeah. That's so a very interesting um, space to be watching. Um, also, uh, the next one, uh, Bitcoin blockchain's first property ownership transfer uh, settled by U U Ubiquity. 
And, um, you know, this is actually quite interesting because on this program, we're talking about a lot of firsts. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think the firsts are just going to increase. But, yeah, so it's working. Yeah, absolutely working. And then it's also getting onto TV. Now, I've seen a few ads for this, this uh, uh, Mr. Robot. Uh, so I'm now thinking I'm going to have to watch an episode or two. Popular TV shows are now mainstreaming cryptocurrency. And uh, it was in one of the episodes with, with Mr. Robot. So I'm going to check that one out. Yeah, that's very interesting um, um, that, you know, that's happening. And that's going to just um, give more... Um, Awareness for Bitcoin and for cryptocurrencies. Well, you know, also talking about awareness, there's a there's a singer and songwriter in in the UK called Lily Allen, and she's been quite outspoken on numerous things. She's very outspoken on Brexit, and um, and she actually she actually tweeted just the other day to something like I don't know how many millions of fans, eight million fans or something like that, that uh, that Bitcoin is is far more stable than the pound. So, you know, more and more people doing stuff like that is going to get people talking about Bitcoin and uh, getting them involved. Yeah, absolutely. Then this is, this is the thing that was quite interesting, um, I found, that, um, you know, this whole week and the law, in fact, it's not been the whole week, but I mean the, week, uh, the weeks leading up to this week have been talking about the hard fork or the soft fork and uh, for Ethereum, you know, because of the DAO. And now, apparently, they overturned um, the, the vote that miners, miners apparently, 65% of miners didn't want the hard fork. And they just decided to do it. So already about uh, uh, yesterday it started, which was uh, Wednesday the 20th. And they'd already recovered, uh, investors had already recovered um, close to 50% of, of money that they'd invested. So that's going to be a bit of an interesting one. Peter, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Um, what's even more interesting to me, Tracy, is the fact that the guys from Ethereum are, you know, controlling the whole thing. Um, and that's, what I, that's been my problem with Ethereum from the beginning, and that problem is getting bigger. Let's talk about Ethereum now, because um, another thing that I thought was pretty... Uh, <laughs> enlightening is that this this article over here south africa's banks are going to diy to test ethereum's blockchain apparently six african banks and uh, that actually there's apparently a seventh one that's about to join but um they've kind of got together and they want to um start doing some testing and uh, but it but it's actually Someone, the CIO, a chief uh, information officer from Barclays Africa Corporate and Investment Banking Division, is actually uh, spearheading this this process, and uh, it's it's very very collaborative apparently. So this is going to be quite an interesting thing. I know you've got some thoughts on this, Peter. Well, my th my thoughts are that that CIO it might be the chief investment officer for his own account into Ethereum. That's why he's bo 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 uh, boosting it to the bank. And, um, you know, there's another can of worms that's going to open here. And I haven't heard anybody talk about it. But a lot of banks and stuff are getting involved with cryptocurrencies, with Ripple, Ethereum, whatever. Um, um, some with Bitcoin. But how do the banks decide which, which currencies they're going to get involved with? But even worse is, you know, it's mostly IT people that are, that are pushing this. And there's no way for the banks to know whether these guys are pushing something that they have a stake in. Correct. So they, they might be pushing their own agenda or their own their own investments to try to get the banks involved. Um, so this is interesting, and I would like to you know I, I'm I'm wondering how the how the banks and our corporates in general are going to make sure that there's no you know it's a type of insider trading. I go and I decide my bank will um, uh, you know I'm going to buy Ethereum because my bank is going to um, invest in Ethereum or going to to build an Ethereum platform so the price will go up. And there's no way for, for, for anybody to know whether these guys have a vested interest or not. Yeah, it's a very, very good point. I mean, I was just just thinking that, you know, we've, we've come through all this negativity about the hacking. We've come through uh, now this, this, uh, the fact that there, there was not uh, agreement, uh, you know, for this hard fork. And now all of a sudden this new story. So it's, it's quite strange. I'm, I'm quite 
taken aback by this. Yeah. But it's the whole thing about, you know, uh, vested interests in cryptocurrencies is going to become a big thing. Yes. Because of, because of the nature of, of, of the fact that, you, you, you know, the, the, the owners are unknown or the holders Correct. are unknown. Correct. Mm. So this is going to be big. Interesting, yeah. Okay, so the, this is a central banker's bold new idea, print bitcoins. If you can't beat them, join them. And this is actually uh, <coughs> economists at the Bank of England. Uh, that are advocating that central banks issue their own kind of digital currency. And apparently in the U.S., there was a case, star, uh, case study that said that it could actually give a permanent boost to the economy of around 3%. Well, that's interesting. You know, um, I think they're underestimating the amount that can boost the economy, though. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I mean um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure how they think they're going to print more bitcoins, but um, <laughs> let them try. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are watching the price. They're sitting their own little spreadsheets, and here's a convenient way of actually not even doing that and, and still watching the price. So you can sign up with this company. They they're called uh, IFTTT, which is an abbreviation for um, if this then that. Quite cute actually. But um, basically, you can then you can also create your own recipes using your own prefer preferred services and and devices. I actually set one up uh, yesterday. I haven't done a huge amount to it, but I just wanted to see what it's all about. So you can certainly go and, and do this if you're keen on watching the, the price, particularly if you're a trader. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, all these nifty little things are coming our way to make our lives easier. Well, it's, it's nice to be able to uh, get the data and manipulate it. Yeah. So, you know, and, and you said there that, um, you know, it can, be, it can be, the output can be in different formats. So yes. you can output it to different platforms or to Excel or whatever. Yes. And of course, you know, two weeks ago, we had the, just short of two weeks, we had the Bitcoin halving. And, you know, everybody was looking at that. And this is just a, an article talking about where is this thing, where is the price going to go? You know, there's still many, many people that are bullish about it. You and I are both bullish about it. We still got drama happening in the world. Uh, China, uh, devaluation of, of the, the yuan, the Brexit, what's going on in the EU now. Now also the Bank of Japan, um, you know, having some, some problems with the weaker yen. So, you know, th this, this, can only, this can only go up, I believe. Over the long term, the Bitcoin price, I can't see it go anywhere else. I mean, short-term movements we certainly will have that. But, you know, um, the price has been steady over the last few weeks. Yes, it has. And in fact, leading up to that first bull run a few months, uh, about, about, about two months ago, I think, Peter, that uh, was, it, I mean, the price was very, very steady. It really, really was. It was hovering around the uh, $400 mark for, for a long time. Well, the thing is, what we want, to, uh, my perfect scenario would be for the Bitcoin price to, to steadily rise over time. Because it takes a lot of risk out for businesses if that happens. Yes, exactly. And I think that's what they were saying. You know, the volatility is a bit of an issue. So, yeah, um, yeah, but the volatility is not that high anymore. No, uh, not well, that uh, Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm dropped off quite a bit. And um, it is equalizing. If you go, uh, uh, it might be interesting for us to go, uh, uh, Take get like a, a three-year volatility chart on, on Bitcoin and you'll see our volatility went down as more and more adoption takes place. Correct. Now we can do that. Mm -hmm. So the U.S. government, congressional resolution calls on U.S. government to support the blockchain. So this is not a, not a, a, a binding resolution. And, uh, but, you know, the good thing is that the U.S. is getting involved, the government's getting involved, and they want to encourage, they want to develop a national policy to encourage the development of tools for consumers to learn and protect their assets in, the, in a way that maximizes the promise customized uh, connected devices hold to empower customers, I mean consumers, and foster future economic growth, create new commerce and new, new, new markets. So, I mean, they're definitely not uh, resting on their laurels here. No, absolutely not. They are right up there trying to, you know, get most use out of this new technology that they can. Yeah. I mean, I think the governments have also learned from the internet, you know. Um, in the beginning, people were very skeptical about technology and stuff like that. But 
um, the world is also getting, I mean, are, are much used to, uh, you know, new technologies coming out and keen to embrace it. I mean, um, um, I'm always astounded to see how something like Uber has grown. And, you know, despite a, a few itches and stuff like that, um, but uh, mostly, mostly governments and cities and stuff like that are supporting new technology now. Yes. Because, uh, you know, the guys have seen the, the incredible um, value it can add. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's very exciting, I have to say. You know, we, we definitely are a more connected society, um, you know, and, and now the, the world is really, really small. Yeah, the world is getting smaller. <laughs> okay, here's another interesting one, um, and, and might be interested to, to, for, for law enforcement as well, even though it wasn't developed for that. A new research project called uh, BitCluster, Track sloppy Bitcoin usage. So this was um, actually set up by a, an assistant professor at, at a university, and they um, they really wanted to do it for data. It, it wasn't and research. It wasn't really for, as a, as a tool, but law enforcement can use it, even though they're not able to. Uh, it's not able to identify a person's name or address. But what they can do is they can make they can actually uh, find different addresses that actually come from the same source. So, you know, this could be quite interesting. Oh, absolutely. And also, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's very um, um, interesting and um, very important as well. Um, I think that um, this whole monitoring of, of the blockchain and what's happening is just going to increase. Absolutely. So here's another... Um, you know what, there's been so much, so many acquisitions and mergers and everything going on. It's, it's such an exciting time. And Bitcoin Miner, Bitmain, acquires, acquires data startup block trail. So, um, you know, this is another thing about they wanting the data, um, bought this company. And, and, and here's, a, here's a quote at the bottom here. We have seen a lot of consolidation going on in the past year. And for us, it was really a perfect match of finding a big player that has a that has a use for all the technology we built. So you know, people are are, are joining businesses because and making them bigger and better. Yeah, I mean, this is true, and and I think that that, that trend is going to increase. No, you it's know. very exciting. If you've got a good idea, you know, who knows what it can bring you. Start a Bitcoin business if you don't know what to do with your time. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, and then, uh, you know, we're always talking about Bitcoin being a, um, a new asset class and uh, JP Morgan has have, have just actually set out a report. Um, blockchain technology is an opportunity for asset managers and really asset managers to, to, be, uh, to serve their clients better in new ways, you know, real-time reporting, alternative trading strategies, but, um, you know, um, improved data sources is key. Oh, yes. I mean, and, 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 and you know, yeah, I mean, uh, JP Morgan's right. This is an opportunity for asset managers that's going to be great. So they should jump on it. They absolutely should. Okay, now, this is um, an interesting one as well. Identity service civic launches, and it's all about um, identity theft, believe it or not. And th this, how this actually works is this, is this is using the social security number. This is, of course, only for um, the people in the United States. And <coughs> it was actually uh, the brainchild of a South African entrepreneur, uh, Vinnie Lingham. And he actually, he actually had a, a startup before. It was called Gift. And he sold that for $54 million. Um, and uh, how interesting is that? And now he's actually just started up another one. So this is actually very, very exciting. But not only that, he's, he's saying that identity fraud is, is a serious issue. And uh, fraudsters have stolen um, $112 billion in the past six years. It, that equates to... Thirty-five thousand six hundred dollars stolen stolen per minute. Staggering. Well, this is the biggest threat to our uh, of of crime is, is cyber 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 threats and cyber crimes, because I think we don't even know how much money is um, stolen over the internet. Yes, it's absolutely crazy, and um, you know there's all kinds of 
of, of scams and, and, and whatever. But, um, you yeah, know, it's, it's interesting that uh, they're looking at identity theft now and trying to combat this. But um, um, in, the, in that um, you also mentioned that other business, um, Tracy Gift, that's quite an interesting business as well that the guys sold because that, that is a gift card thing where you can actually use your Bitcoins to buy um, a gift. You can buy like a Marks and Spencer gift card or uh, a, a Target gift card in the US or, or um, an Amazon gift card with gift. Mm. And, 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 um, and you can you can buy those gift cards with your bitcoin. So it's a way for you to, you know, to use your bitcoins. So you can yeah. take bitcoin and buy a gift cards, and then take the gift card and use it at the shop. Amazing, mm -hmm. excellent. But uh, you know, this is also quite an uh, quite an interesting one as well. Russia doing a U-turn. Bitcoin forex trading to be legal. Mining banned. So they don't want any mining going on in their country. They say that the ruble is the uh, official country. So any, uh, sorry, the official currency of Russia. So the issue of any other currency is illegal. However, you can use Bitcoin. Uh, you, you know, you can use Bitcoin um, in you know moving it across border, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, you just cannot mine it. That's very interesting. So basically, what they're saying is, um, yeah. If you mine it, you're creating another currency in your country, and that would be illegal. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting, interesting way of looking at it. <laughs> and here's a company called uh, Revolut. Fintech startup linked to prepaid MasterCard raises over 7.75 uh, million pounds. So this this company is... Um, um, it's actually it's an, it's an app that's linked to a prepaid MasterCard. So it, it gives you the features of a MasterCard and uh, it allows people to deposit money into their bank account or their card. And once it's loaded, can you believe it? This, is, this is, uh, can be used in 90 different countries with 23 different currencies. Uh, as though it, it's as if the person had, um, you know, the money in their, in their pocket from that particular, current, uh, from that particular country. Um, and of course, no international transaction fees. So this is perfect for people who are uh, travelers or tourists and you want to buy something overseas. I mean, at the moment, you know, if you go and you buy something from um, f with your credit <coughs> card anywhere out in, 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 in another country, you're obviously going to be paying all those fees. Yes. And, um, yeah, you know, those fees are, I mean, MasterCard and, and, and Visa, I think, you know, their, their business models are under attack. Because these fees are being slashed by all of this. Yeah, definitely. So this is very interesting. Yes. So apparently with this, uh, they're offering no uh, transaction fees if you transfer. So if, if, uh, you know, if you transfer from one person to the next, as long as you've got the same, if you've got an account on Revolut, um, you know, that's free. So obviously it's going to be bringing in more people because they'd want to do this. And, um, and then they're going to make money out of other products which they're going to sell to their people later on. Interesting place to, or wrong, quite an interesting story this. Very interesting yeah. story. Yeah. And um, there are similar uh, companies that um, started doing this. Uh, one that comes to mind is a company called Circle. Yes. That um, we reported on a while ago as well. Yeah. Doesn't that one? Isn't that one also with um, you know consolidating all your cards into one? That was another one. That was called. Um, I think the name of that company was called Curve. Oh, okay. All right. I actually I'm, mentioned it this morning, so I need to go back and change that. Sorry, no, I just fell yeah. off my chair. <laughs> well, as long as you're right. As long as we didn't lose this uh, this connection. No, we didn't do the connection. It's actually good. No, I'm sitting and rocking on my chair, playing playing the fool, and then I fall down. Then I fell down. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, w I won't do it again. I promise. Yeah. Thank you very much. So Bitcoin is forcing the IRS and central banks' hands because you know um, Bitcoin is is becoming more and more prominent within the global economy, and obviously there are governments uh, and and people concerned about taxes. So. Uh, you know, with, with Bitcoin, the users are really unknown, so you don't know who to who to tax. Um, and, you know, they, they still haven't decided whether it's a currency or a commodity or what. 
You know what, um, Tracy, I've been thinking about this a lot and, and maybe the guys who are right that said, let's scrap income tax and, you know, let's just use consumption tax so that you pay tax on everything that you buy. Mm. And then nobody pays income tax because then tax, tax collection is easy. Yes, very easy. But um, I don't think that will ever happen. But yeah. Um, yeah, but, not, in, not in any time soon. But maybe that's the way to collect in the digital economy. Yeah, Just to have some kind of a VAT or something, you know, a value-added tax on. Yes, that's on, a good idea, Peter. Because they're not going to collect on the income tax side with this. It's just tax evasion is just going to become more and more. And, uh, yeah, so, so that's going to be interesting. Okay, so here's another uh, startup. It's, it's a company called uh, 34 Bytes. Uh, Bitcoin uh, point of sale terminal starts beta testing. So um, these people are, have have come up with this device, which you can see in the picture below, and um, and basically it's it's really a um, uh, it's a terminal that that companies you know or or let's say retailers, shop owners, merchants they would actually have uh, to take to take Bitcoin because you just really scan uh, the QR code. And it, and it transacts the exchange. I see here it is, um, it's, it's linked to, to Coinbase. Yeah, I'm just wondering, um, you know, uh, I mean, any business can just use a smartphone and the Coinbase app to do the same thing. Mm. You know what, there's going to be so many of these new applications that people are going to come to, the, you know, going to be inventing. You know, yeah. and, and some of them are going to work, some of them are not going to work. It just depends on adoption. Yeah. Which also brings me back to uh, just one question. I thought I'd go back here. What about ATM machines? Do you, you know, what's going to happen with those? It's a, it's a very good question because the thing with ATM machines and, and why I'm not really excited about them is um, if banks all of a sudden decide to get involved in Bitcoin, they can just and, 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 and add Bitcoin um, onto your bank statement. Mm. It would mean, you know, they, they can, you can then withdraw from your Bitcoin account from any ATM that the bank has. Yes. So the, the problem with Bitcoin ATMs is, is you always have this overhang that if banks really adopt it, then that business is dead because they've, you know, they have an ATM networks of thousands and thousands of, of machines that are already out there. So why Correct. would you then need um, Bitcoin-specific ATM machines? Yeah. Correct. Interesting. So, yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at that. As a business, there's too much risk. Okay, now um, SAP is quietly playing uh, test and see with blockchain. You know, um, SAP, a software company founded in the 70s from a group of IBM engineers. And, you know, they've been very, very successful getting into governments, getting into retailers, manufacturers. You know, and uh, with their processes and stuff, and all, and, and interesting to say that uh, they're looking at blockchain as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, um, I, I think all of these technology companies do. Um, yeah, so this is very interesting as as well. Now, just another uh, way that the blockchain can be used. Yeah, areas of finance, payments, supply chain management. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, basically, you know, um, um, SAP is a, is a very big provider, as you just said. And, uh, you know, it encompasses all kinds of industries because, you know, they are IT business, so they service clients in all industries. Correct. So here's, some, here's a company around uh, your neck of the woods, a Switzerland-based uh, mobile game developer. So they've actually, it's called a BitCrystal's Price Source as Spells of Genius Nears Launch. Spells of Genius is, is the game. It's a new online trading card game that uses blockchain technology. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm not a game player, but millions and millions and millions of people are. So I'm quite sure that this is, this is going to grow legs. Well, the thing is also what's exciting to me is that people like the gaming companies and stuff are starting to use the blockchain mm. because, the, you know, uh, I mean, games are the reason why graphics are so developed and a lot of internet development and, and, and technology development are happening because of games. Yes. It's a huge, huge business, um, uh, building games. So, you know, it's a multi-billion um, uh, uh, industry. So, yes. yeah, definitely very interesting, Tracy. Yeah. And by the way, did you know the Bitcoin network has been functional for 
99.989991418% of the time um, since its inception on the 3rd of January 2009. Can you believe that? That's excellent. I think I was on the one day it was off. Really? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I wonder when that day was. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, it's great that the network is, is so reliable, you know. Yeah, I know, um, it's incredible. It's more reliable than anything else I've seen, so it just shows you. Absolutely. But it, it also, I must say, it's also a testament to the internet now. I mean, really, you can um, uh, go anywhere in the world and you have internet everywhere. Yeah. Well, there's still a lot of uh, remote areas that obviously don't have, but there's, and, and now with Bitcoin, um, uh, it's, it's such a huge opportunity for these, uh, for someone <laughs> to put, um, you know, internet terminals or whatever you want to call it. What are those big towers? Transmit oh, that's a, transmitters, that's the word I'm looking for, um, you know, in remote areas so that there's more coverage so that, that people that are living in those rural areas can can actually become banked. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. And also, like we've said many times before, the unbanked community in Africa, the, the you know the uh, the poor, they don't have any bank accounts and stuff. Uh, most of them have um, communications; they have cell phones and stuff like that, so they can get into the Bitcoin system. Absolutely. Well, on that very, very positive note, Peter, do you have any more to add? No, I just think, you know, that you need to, if you, if you, if you want to um, get more information or whatever, embrace this digital economy and follow us. Uh, join our Facebook page, um, you know, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and um, we are going to uh, provide just more and more information on many things. So get involved. Absolutely. So until next week, have a, an even hotter <laughs> Bitcoin week. Thank you, Tracy. I'll check to you next week. Cheers. Bye.